So now that we have the base edge bevel established, which again is a when the skis are brand new or recently got stone ground, um, and if you're not comfortable doing it, let the shop that stone ground them apply the base edge bevel. Because if you keep pulling base edge bevel, you will actually increase the base edge bevel and not have the skis be as quick and precise as you would want them to be. So since we're done with that, we're going to go on to the side edge. And the best way to work on a side edge is to put the ski up on edge, drop the end supports, So with this ski, I'll put the end supports all the way down. That doesn't apply to all skis with different shapes and side cuts. And then clamp down on the center piece of the vise. So I'm holding it on the where the boot toe touches the binding and the base right there. And then that is secure in there. And the tool that the Beast has for side edging is called the Side of Beast. It is a 90 degree body or zero. Um, which we went to just one, two, three. So all the bodies are the same. All the clamps to grab the angle plate, the fire, or the diamond stone are the same. And then there is interchangeable bevel plates in this tool. This one right here is a two degree. That is my magic number for side edging, kind of like one degree on the base. But you can go with a one degree, two degree, four de three degree, or four degree. Um, Four degree is for very, very extreme elite level slalom racing only. So two degree is my magic number for recreation and racers up until about the NORAM level. So the way this tool works, you have the clamp opened up and then you'll put a file through on an angle like this and then you tighten down this main knob here these two knobs they only apply if you're changing the bevel plate in the tool so they'll stay static secure um, for most people for the duration of the tool and what i like to do on side edging is have a file card here or a paintbrush or any sort of brush you're comfortable with and i hold it in my left hand and again just like base edge beveling when you're trying to get a feel for how to tune and making sure you don't make mistakes, I like applying a little bit of Sharpie on the edge so you can see if you've pulled off enough material and if you're getting the right bevel. So again, just like base beveling also, I'll start on the left side. And I do that because that's just the sequence that I've gotten into with repetition of tuning. It's good to get in your own habits so you know exactly where you're at if you get sidetracked, take a phone call, have to watch part of a football game, something like that. You know exactly where you're at with tuning. So I'll start up here on the tip and pull the side of piece back, very similar to how I apply pressure with the base piece. About 12 to 18 inch overlapping strokes and then I always like to feel the edge and I've preferred to use these two fingers because oh, I'm holding the tool in, these, in this hand and feel the edge. Typically the edge through daily skiing will be not quite as sharp from about the toe piece to just past the heel piece because that's where most of the pressure is applied. So you might need to file, not necessarily more there, but pay attention to that area the tip is usually going to be the sharpest part of the ski after daily skiing because no one has ever gotten forward as much as they should to apply enough pressure there. But So you want it sharp and you want it consistent. And right now this is very consistent. So what I will do is then move into a medium 220 grit diamond stone and for average skiing recreational, even advanced, or most racing, um, definitely all race training until you get into very elite levels. A 220 grit diamond stone is very good to have um, and what is necessary to polish the edge because a file can leave striations in the edge that can create a grabby or rail type skiing feel. So you put the diamond stone in and what I always like to do is put the diamond stone at a bit of an angle. Um, 
this is my default, my comfort way, but I'll also switch it around to where it's that way. And why I like to have it on an angle is because with the aggressive side cut of skis, especially a slalom ski in nine, 10 meter radius, if you have a four inch diamond stone straight and parallel with the tool, the edge is only touching the very outsides of the diamond stone and you'll wear those out before you utilize the whole body of the stone. So go to putting it on an angle there and so with the file you always want to pull it but a diamond stone you can run it back and forth it is not directional so my preferred method is just to go about feel some overlapping strokes and then run it back and forth a couple of times it will polish the edge and add extra sharpness so then after I do that actually I will do that and then in certain conditions you might want to take just a little bit of edge off with the gummy stone this is not detuning like was the common technology back with straight skis in the 70s 80s and even 90s you want to just run the gummy stone lightly down the edge at about a 45 degree angle and then feel it if it's too sharp in a place and that's a little too sharp right there then I'll hit it again and when it comes to sharpening an edge and taking some of the edge off the gummy stone it's all based on the feel of the technician which most time is dad for the kid or what the athlete is feeling on the snow a gummy stone is a very good thing to have in your pocket when you're skiing so if the conditions are excessively grippy you can usually take a little bit of edge off and then the skis won't be jumping and hooking on you so that's what you want to do with the side edge and then after I get done with this edge I will flip the ski around and do the same thing on the other edge again going from tip on the left to tip on the right when I get done with the tip on the right, then I know I'm done with that ski and I can move on to the next.